This is crazy new model. It lets different people train different parts of the model on their proprietary data without sharing the data. And then in the end, everybody constructs the model. This can also be a way for distributed training where not just one big company has all of the compute and trains the best model, but a lot of people train small parts of the model of one of the experts in the mixture of experts. And then we all combine the big model. Let's learn about Flex Olmo. Training LLM traditionally requires a massive centralized data set. This approach creates a significant barrier for organizations that possess valuable domain-specific data but cannot share it due to privacy regulations, confidentiality, 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 or intellectual property concerns. Imagine a hospital wanting to build a medical AI without exposing patient records, or a tech company wanting to use its proprietary codebase without making it public. This is the problem FlexOlmo is designed to solve. So FlexOlmo stands for Open Language Models for Flexible Data Use. This new class of models allows for distributed training without data sharing and flexible data use at inference. We definitely need to solve this problem of concentrated AI in a single company with a lot of compute and then them holding all of the power. So uh, we have this model FlexOlmo and here are the constraints that it must have. So data sharing constraints, Standard model training requires all data to be pooled in one location. This is a non-starter for regulated industries like healthcare and finance, or for any organization with sensitive data. Lack of data control. Once a model is trained, it's difficult to remove the influence of a specific data source. This is problematic if data usage rights expire, or if certain data is only appropriate for specific use cases, high cost of collaboration, methods like federated learning, which also train on distributed data, often require costly and complex synchronized updates between all parties, limiting their practical adoption for massive LLMs. Flex almost solutions are distributed. Data owners train their part of the model locally, asynchronous, Contributors can train and update their modules independently without needing to coordinate with others in real time. That's, that's the idea. So this is a very good idea. Flexible. End users can include or exclude specific data sources at the moment of inference with no retraining required. So how I imagine it is everybody has its own module and in the end, all modules are combined. That's how I'm imagining it, but let's see if it's like that. Step two, the architecture, a smarter mixture of experts. FlexOlmo is built on a mixture of experts architecture. Here's a simple breakdown. So a mixture of experts, instead of one feed forward network, you have multiple feed forward networks and each could be expert in mathematics, history, this, that. So each of the neural networks is an expert in one thing, one domain. And then when language model needs to process some information, it's going to choose the appropriate expert. Flex almost adapts this mixture of expert concept for its unique purpose. There is one public expert, which is general purpose model trained on a large open data set, like a filtered version of the web. I can guess where this is going. You have public single shared expert or multiple and they are always activated. And then some of the other experts get also activated that are trained uh, with different like organizations and stuff. This is such a good idea. This is such a crazy good idea by them. Each data owner with a private data set math code legal trains their own specialized expert. Yeah. When the model is used, all these experts are brought together. The router's job is to intelligently route a user's query to the right combination of experts. For example, a question about Python might activate the public and code expert. Yeah, that's it. This is such a good idea. I didn't think about this. Public shared expert and specialized experts trained by different companies. And these experts don't share data and they can be disabled or excluded in inference. Step three, the training secret, training to coordinate. 
And by the way, these Olmo models are for from Allen Institute of AI. It's fully open source. This is the most critical innovation of Flex Olmo. How can experts trained in complete isolation learn to work together seamlessly? If each expert is trained independently, their internal representations might diverge so much that combining them produces incoherent results. Flex Olmo solves this with a clever technique called coordinated training. Start with a public anchor. Every data owner begins with the exact same pre-trained public model, MPUB. This model acts as a shared foundation or a common language. Create a temporary two-expert MOE. To train a new math expert, for example, the data owner sets up a temporary MOE model with just two experts. The public expert and it's uh, frozen. So this is the original that we got here. So it doesn't update during training. And the new math expert, the weights here are initialized from our MPUB, our public model, but then the weights are also updated during training on the private data set. Train on private data. The data owner now trains their temporary mixture of expert on their private math data. During this process, the math expert learns to specialize in mathematical reasoning, for example. So by training this math expert alongside the frozen public expert, the math expert learns to fill the gaps and learns to uh, use and learns the math knowledge that this public frozen expert uh, doesn't have. Since every data owner uses the same frozen public anchor, all specialized experts uh, indirectly learn to be compatible with each other because they're all compatible with the same public expert and they adapt to the same public expert. So this is a good idea. Uh, I feel like this is like some of those ideas where you don't know if it's gonna actually work. But since this it turns out in this paper, I guess it turns out it worked. Step four, the router. Merging without joint training. The second major challenge is, uh, is training the router, yes. A typical mixture of experts router needs to see data from all experts to learn which one to choose. But in Flex almost setup, no single party has access to all the data. So you basically you need to also train the router to choose the experts. But we are training experts separately. So how do we now add router to all of those experts when you group them together? The solution is domain informed router that is assembled, not jointly trained. Router embeddings. Each expert is assigned a vector or embedding that represents its domain. The router works by calculating the similarity between an input token and each expert's embedding to decide where to send it. This is good. This is good. Smart initialization. Uh, to get a good starting point, the router embedding for the math expert is created by taking a sample of documents from the private math dataset, running them through a general purpose text embedding model and averaging the results. This gives the router a mathematical scent for the expert. So you just, I guess you take a a few or bunch of samples from these documents, convert them to vector embedding, and then average all of those vector embeddings to find like average mathematical vector embedding that shows this mathematics, this embedding of this meaning of these documents that this expert was trained on, these math documents. Three, fine tuning in pairs. During the coordinated training, step three, the router embedding for the new expert is fine tuned. Wait, this is a bit confusing to me as well. Uh, the router learns a simple pairwise decision. For this token, should I use the public expert or the new specialized expert? Ah, so this is where we are still training the two experts, so each, in, each pair individually. It's choosing either public or the specialized. Final assembly. To create the final model, you simply stack the router embeddings from all the independently trained experts. This forms the complete router matrix that can now choose between all available experts without ever have, having been trained on the combined dataset. 
So I guess each expert has its uh, vector embedding meaning of the meaning, and we just put all of them, and then a router produces a vector embedding, and then we find which one is most similar, which, uh, and then choose that expert. That's how I understand it. The paper also mentions adding a negative bias term to each specialized expert score. This is a subtle but important tweak that encourages the router to be more selective, only activating a specialist expert when it's highly confident and defaulting to the general public expert otherwise. Okay, so we want to make it only select this if it's highly confident and the general otherwise. And then during inference, if you want to exclude some information, some expert, it's very easy to just remove the expert and somebody's proprietary information, let's say. So they tested this flex Solma model versus this base model. I mean the general expert uh, model and versus any of these experts. So the whole combined model all performs any single expert. And for this to make sense, I believe they use same amount of compute and made it fair. They also try to uh, figure out if it's possible to extract this proprietary data from the experts. And they find it very, very difficult to extract proprietary data from the model, from the experts. So it's difficult for somebody to steal the proprietary data that it was trained on. Check out other videos on my channel and join my Discord. Link below the video.